tank deployment was described as the most kinetic since World War II. It was both the best and worst experiences of my life. In, in combat, everything has a consequence, and the consequences are big. But a lot of it is more about what you don't do than what you actually do. Growing up here was incredible. I could go in any direction for as far as my little legs would carry me in. It was a playground, but it was also a proving ground. It was a place where I could learn how to work hard. I've always hunted. I started hunting at the very earliest of ages. It was just part of my job as a kid, was to go out and make the ranch a safer place. I applied to all the military academies. I had to get a congressional nomination to do it. I had the lowest GPA that West Point had ever accepted, which I'm still proud of. But at the same time, I got a rodeo scholarship to Montana Western, and I thought rodeo in Montana sounded more fun than West Point, so off to Montana I went. And at the end of college, I still wanted to serve in the military. It was still something that was very important to me. I packed up my idealism and, and headed off to officer candidate school in Quantico. I competed for my job and became a tank officer. We were building a bridge to connect Sangin and, and Musa Kela, and the Taliban, of course, did not want that to happen. So my job was to secure this bridge site with my tank platoon, and we sat there for 21 days while the bridge was built. We never left the tanks during that time. At one point, after we'd had some RPG attacks through my thermal optics, I saw a guy moving through one of the canals and it looked like he was trying to remain concealed. And it was in the evening and the image wasn't super clear, um, but I was very confident in what I was looking at. I saw on his back what looked like the tube of an RPG and he was advancing towards our position. It was a couple thousand meters away. Before I decided to issue a fire command, I took a closer look at this guy. Well, it, it looked exactly like an RPG tube from 2,000 meters and a thermal device. From that distance with my spotter, I was able to tell what he was carrying on his back was a shovel that was slung um, with a rope over his shoulder. He'd been working all day and he, he was just going home, and that's what he did. I was outside the wire over 100 days, did over 100 missions. In one specific pass, we had two tanks and one truck strike IEDs right next to each other, and I was next to one of the tanks, and I, I received a brain injury from that blast. A few hours later, my, my tank was hit by a recoilless rifle, and I took some shrapnel on my back from that, and, and that was the same shrapnel that hit my spotting scope. About a third of our unit was wounded during that mission, over 30 guys. So I went ahead and, and finished up the mission. It took about another 40 hours. I was wounded there twice. I've, was awarded two Purple Hearts. Um, each time I had the option of, of returning back to the States. Uh, and I, I just refused to leave my Marines. And I, I completed the deployment and then came home.
you know, it feels feels good to go home, um, but home has changed and, and I've changed. So it's a complicated feeling. My Marines are still serving. Some of them are, are deployed right now. And uh, I want to be with them, but that's not my job anymore. If I didn't have this, this spotting scope, I wouldn't have been able to do my job as well. Still use it, use it almost every day. It's not perfect anymore, but neither am I, you know? And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna, not gonna give up on it. You know, we're, we're not gonna quit. We may take some licks along the way, but, but we're gonna get the job done. That's a sense that the Oregonians have. It is good to come home, you know, I'm, I'm married now, I have a kick-ass wife, and I get to live in my favorite place in the world. And I get to do the job that if you would ask me what I wanted to be when I grew up as a six-year-old, I would have said a guide. And I'm, I'm doing what I love in the place that I love. And I'm surrounded by, by people who, who love and support me. And, uh, I, I can't ask for anything more.